Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to define the second order mixed partial, and I'm going to begin by uh, with taking a function of two variables where there's only two second order mixed partials. Now, the way it's going to work is like this. So I'm going to take the notation and the definition together. So the second order mixed partial f sub x y of x comma y. This is this is basically defined as. It's defined as. So I'll use code equal to for defined as f sub x sub y of x comma y. What do I mean by that? I mean, first you differentiate f with respect to x. Okay, you get a new function of two variables. Now you differentiate that new function of two variables with respect to y. Okay, so another way of saying that is that if we, or if you just want to elaborate, so if you let, if you set g, x, y, if I introduce a new letter g for f sub x of x, y, then this is it's g sub y of x sub y. Okay, so f sub x y is just shorthand for f sub x sub y. So you 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 first do the leftmost thing, then you do the next one. Okay, now how would you write it in the in the in the Leibniz notation? The Leibniz notation. If you just had to do the the the, the uh, sort of longhand notation, it's going to be b b b y of b f x y by dx. So, so notice, so you first differentiate with respect to x, then you differentiate with respect to y. And because of the way we write this, the, the one we do later actually comes on the left in this notation. Okay. Uh, and, and the shorthand, the sort of the notation you would use in the shorthand would be d, d2 f of x, y. What will come down? dx, dy. No, dy, dx. So you so in in this notation you write the one you do first on the left and the one you do second on the right, whereas in that in this notation so these are all four are equal. In this in this notation you do the one you do first you do it on the right and then the other one you do on the left right because that's how you wrote it. Here. Okay. Does it really matter? Well, we it will turn out that that in most cases f sub x y and f sub y x are going to be equal, but we don't know that yet. Okay, but right now we are we are just defining it. Uh, but so okay, so let me go to the other one then. F sub y x. Okay, f sub y x of x comma well, how is that going to be defined? Uh also corresponding in the bracket that's f y mm -hmm. uh sub x x y. And so we can define this now if uh, h of x comma y is f y x x y then it's going to be h sub x of x y okay and so you could also write this in the Leibniz notation d d x right Dy. And and the other way you write the short head the, the, the so again the things get flipped over right the dx dy okay so in this case this is a function of two variables case there there's only these two mixed partials Right? You could either do the x and then y. The, the word mix means you're not allowed to do the same thing twice. If you did the same thing twice, it would just be a second order pure partial. Because the second order mixed partial, there's two of these f sub x and f sub y. These are the only two because there's two variables. You can pick one and then the other. Now it turns out that under, under many circumstances, these two things are actually going to be equal. So you have to make some assumptions that the second order partials are both continuous functions 
and if they're both continuous functions in a region, then then in fact they have to be equal. Uh, okay, so so it is true under certain circumstances that these functions are equal, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Yes, under certain conditions. And this is this is what which is called Clairaut's theorem. And the theorem which says that under certain conditions they're equal is called Clairaut's theorem. Okay. Before we go, before we finish, I just want to say one more thing. That suppose you have a function of three variables, okay, and or five variables or something, and then you can do mixed partials even for a function of three variables or five variables or twenty variables. But there you don't just have one possible, or you, there you don't just have these two generally equal possibilities. You have more than that, right? So if you have a function of three variables, you have three choices for the first variable, for the first differentiation, two and then you have two next. for the next. So you have six, out of which they'll, they'll, they'll come in three pairs, right? So because each, each, like, if you have, like, the three variables, x, y, z, up here. So if you have f of x, y, z, then you can do f sub x, y, f sub x, z, f sub y, x, f sub y, z, f sub, what is? Oh, z, x, z, hmm? y. Okay, so there's six of these, but now you would expect, if you have these certain conditions, that these two are equal, these two are equal, and these two are equal. Right? So you have three pairs. So essentially you should expect three different functions. Uh, but but in uh, if the Clairaut's limit condition don't hold, you could have up to six different functions. We can also have f x y z, right? Yeah, but we are doing second order mixed partials. Oh, oh, that would be third order. That would be third order. Right? You're differentiating twice. So second order mixed partials. In general, if you have n n variables, how many function? How many second order partials do you expect? N, n times by n minus one. N minus one. And now, if you assume Clairaut's theorem, then you'll divide by two. Right, because here they'll come in pairs. Okay, and in our case n is two. We're doing the two variable case. In that case, you just get uh, two times two minus one over two, which is just one. I mean, if if you're similarly equal, if you just go here, you get two things. Right. 